when we broke the camera. Oop. Yeah, look up there. Alright, there it is. The storm we had last night worked off a branch. If I don't do something about that, the split's going to just keep on continuing on down. I'm going to cause more damage to the tree. You get a ladder and something to cut with to get that taken care of. I'm going to give you a top down view so you can understand what we're going to be doing here in the next couple of months whenever I start this tree care video. Today, of course, is not a tree care video. We just have a chore that needs to get done. Okay, if you look over up for this branch up here, you can see it. It's got a branch running there. If you follow it down, it's the lowest branch coming out to the side. I'm thinking about removing this one because if you look, see where it's going? It's going out over the patio area where I want my grape arbor. It's going to be an obstruction. I need to get rid of that. In the meantime, look here. You can see the central trunk. And in order for me to get over there to the chimney, to clear it out, I'll show you. I have all these branches crossing over each other here, and I didn't want to do anything about them while they were still growing green during the summer, but it's coming up on top for me to clear these up. I have to clear this up so I can have access to the central trunk of this tree, so I can do a very important work like I'm getting ready to do right now, which I was trying to do something split right there. You can get a good look at that split. And the object is to get up with a pruning saw okay, and get ahead of where that run is happening. And hopefully we can stop this entire portion of the tree from pulling itself off. We'll see. I don't know. I was planning on doing a little top pruning. I might go ahead and just take that entire section out. Where the handle of my saw is cut, take that entire fork off, and then that will help promote the bushing of the tree a bit, kind of spread out, get a bit more coverage, hopefully make more nuts in the future. But you know, we say that we like to see the trees growing fast, but one of the byproducts of fast growth is a tendency to have little accidents like this one. All right, I'm going to get you down out of the ladder and set you up so you can see what I'm doing. Get this cut and we'll get back to the video that we're supposed to be doing today, which is including place here. This branch here, I'm going to have to clean up. You see how many nuts I've got on it? I don't want to cut it off right now. I've got, no, I've got a few nuts on it. This needs to be cleaned up. I think this one here, also laden with nuts, needs to be cleaned up. So I've got several branches that need to be burned, but I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the, the nuts I've already got on. So they get to stay for the moment while I come over here. I'm going to do something that Mary doesn't like. Pardon me a moment while I uh, switch over to the other side. Oh, nope. Mary doesn't like when I do that. It makes her nervous. Alright, so unfold the folding saw. There we go. Now, get over here and have one. Alright, so after a bit of finagling, we was able to get in here where I can work. Come off. Fortunately, this limb is light. But, as you can imagine, the headache you have just splintered off and came down in your head. Uh, I'm trying here to get cut going on the back side of the bark, so whenever it does split, it doesn't tear the bark out. I don't want this tear of the bark to go down any further. All right, now we got this limb, which unfortunately got broken by the storms. But now we got the the tear that started splitting all the way up here. Got it arrested here. It may be too late for this section, but that's okay. We'll take it out come winter. But we really just couldn't let 
this one branch here stay up there and potentially damage the tree any further. So, I'll go ahead and drop this down. Coming out your way. There we go. We'll do some patchwork on this in a bit. Let me go get back to today's project. Country is the heap of mulch that I have pulled off of this region here. If you pan around, let's have a look at it all. This is the area surrounding our new water feature. We've pulled all the mulch off, so we have access to that clay surface underneath. And let's get up close and personal. I'll show you what we're ready to do. All right, here we are at Gopher Central. We got a little bit of that Bermuda grass still clinging on here. This stuff is just really hard to get rid of. A little strangling line there. Let's pull that out of the way. All right, now since we have some good rain, our surface is not a solid baked clay brick, but it's still very, very dense material here. And we just have just a fine layer of organic material right here at the top from the wood mulch that's been here for a little over a year now. Not really doing much of anything, unfortunately. So today we're gonna take this fork, drive it as deep as we can into that clay, break it up, put lots of little holes in it, and then I'll show you what we'll do next. Broad forks are perfectly acceptable for this sort of work. Incidentally, if you have a broad fork, you can use a broad fork for exactly this purpose, and it's great for that. I just don't happen to have a broad fork, so I'm gonna be using my pitiful little garden fork instead. Down one full foot, push back, push forward. Down one full step, push back, push forward. And we're doing this about three inches apart. Okay. Over three inches. And then we're just going to come in a line. Do it again. And we're going to do this for every three inches. Break it up. Go down all the way. Break it up. Go down all the way. Break it up. Right after rain is great for this because it's a lot softer and easier to work. <sighs> but still. This is going to have me good and worn out. By tonight, I will sleep well. Once again, having a broad fork at this stage would come in handy. But as this is the only patch I have to deal with at the moment, that's heavy clay, I think I'm gonna stick with the, the garden fork. It's okay. So once I've gone across like that, we're just gonna come over here and push down, break. And three, or three inches, push down and break. Push down and break. See how that works? So we have divided our clay up into little clay posts about three inches on the side. Three inches on the side. There we go. I'm going to come in here and continue with this. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what we do once we've got that part done. This is also a good opportunity, by the way, to pull out any undesired plants that you might have. I'm having a hard time seeing weeds anymore. But any plants that you've got in there that you don't want in there, like that particular vine, likes to strangle out other things so I don't want it I don't want it too aggressive of a vine. Oh mine's some vines but if they're too aggressive and they pose a risk for all my other plants then I think I'd rather find something else to fill that niche. A less aggressive vine perhaps. There we go. Now I'm just gonna come over here and once again every three inches break our little clay lines up into clay columns, like so, just like so. There we go. So on and so forth. 
All right, now that I've gone over this entire area and filled it with perforations every three inches or so, a whole series of perforations. So we don't really have any pieces of clay any more than about that big. Time to spread the peltized gypsum over the surface of the area. This stuff will work itself right down into those holes, but to help it out, I've got a ring. The gyps is going to work to make these chunks of clay not want to come together and form these big monolithic blocks like you saw me pulling out earlier. Put the gypsum down, it's time for our biochar. This was crushed just about like this last week, and then I spent the past week soaking in some liquid organic fertilizer. I've got a video back a ways where you can watch and see how it's made. So charcoal has an incredible amount of surface area, which makes it great for a sponge to hold that fertilizer in the first place and as a future home for microorganisms that will gather in and take advantage of all that surface area. This, out. That will this will help to colonize the soil with beneficial microbes, which will help turn this clay into actual soil. Now I can work our peltized gypsum and the biochar into these holes with the brake using the back side, just like this. So, work that into those holes. Yeah. Now it doesn't all go in, I'm going to have some chunks, especially this larger stuff that's going to settle on the top, but that's okay. The bulk of it's going to get down there where it needs to go. And it'll all get where it's going eventually. Well, we're about to get a little bit of rain, but I should have enough time to go ahead and throw down some of this clover seed here. And that'll give us a good batch of green manure that'll grow in the winter, as long as it doesn't get too cold, <laughs> and pop up for us in the spring. And that's you know, one of the first and best tips I can give you whenever you're planting an area, plant your fertilizer. Good nitrogen fixing plant, work as a ground cover. There's so many great things for you. So this is the Dutch white clover, Trifolium ripens. If I'm saying it correctly. We'll just get this scattered around here. We'll be good to go. We'll get it soaked in. Either I'll soak it in with a hose or it'll rain tonight, one of the two.
All right. Now that we've got the camera back up and running, I've got a package of uh, seeds here. And I found my salt shaker. Let's take a look. Okay, here we go. One big five pound bag of Dutch white clover seed. Um, I've had a couple of days to look at this area and I was unhappy with the amount of seed that I had to sow previously because I just didn't quite have enough to cover the way I wanted it covered. So we ordered up more, it's arrived. And I found my salt shaker. Of course this empty salt shaker has been emptied out a long time ago. But it has these holes that are just the right size to let small seeds, to let small seeds like the clover go right through. So it's very useful as a tool for sowing that kind of seed whenever you want to broadcast sow. Now I've got to be careful with the camera angles because there's something that, uh, there's something over here on my left that's going to feature in another video and I don't want to show it to you just yet. There's a little meadow space here, and it's got a couple things growing that we're still trying to volunteer. Strangling vines. All right, so we just go back and forth and disperse the seed evenly over the ground. Next sprinkle of salt. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Even good and tight around these clover plants in this yarrow that we planted here. You get in here in front of the sage bush really good. Actually get up under the sage bush a little bit. Sprinkle those on. Oh, that's a little thick. That's okay. Now, although there's some more rain in the forecast, it's not going to be here for probably another day or two. Although, those clouds overhead are looking kind of ominous. But we've had clouds like that in the last week or so. And no, no rain out of them to speak of. So we're just going to water them in good. Not put so much water on them that they wash away. All right, so that's the salt shaker trick for sowing small seeds and getting them nice and evenly distributed. Well, good people, that's all I've got for you today. As always, if you found the video informative or entertaining, you know what to do. I will catch you.